So for the last month, I've been using a new type of GPS tracker from Invoxia that promises super good battery life, about a month or more. The way that it gets there is by using a new type of cell phone network called LTEN. It's pretty cheap, it's about 120 bucks, and the monthly subscription is under $4 a month. Is it any good? That's what the video is for. Today, I actually just wanna try out and see if this tracker like even sort of works and then also kind of see basically how accurate it is and if there's any like sort of show stoppers that make it immediately not really viable for e-bikes and theft. I don't know how nighttime it looks, but it's 524. So I think we've only got maybe another like 30 minutes of light. I'm just gonna try and do this quick. The first place I tested it was a pier near Fisherman's Wharf in San Francisco. I picked this place because I've had beach GPS tracking be terrible in the past. And surprise, it worked. It was accurate to within about 10 feet, which is plenty close for me. If somebody steals your e-bike and then takes it fishing, you'll be able to find it. It's getting super dark, but I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna try and hit up downtown and then I gotta go home anyway. So we'll see how, so we'll see how this goes. Right now we're underneath the Transamerica building, which is one of the more pointy buildings in San Francisco. I can see that like my updated position for my iPhone, can you see that? Oh yeah. Is where I actually am. And this is exactly where we were when I recorded all that B-roll. This makes sense because even with the most frequent refresh rate, the tracker only updates every five minutes to conserve power. Right now, this is the one that's actually a little bit off by the most, but it's still only, I don't know, maybe like 50 feet or something. The dot that's showing up is my iPhone and that's just about where we are. If you had like a police officer with you and you had to sort of tell them where to go, I don't know if this would be close enough. This is just sort of my initial impressions, but so far, pretty good. After testing out the basics of how well the GPS accuracy worked, I wanted to go a little bit more in depth and try out some real use cases. The first one, grocery shopping. I'm gonna go grocery shop or like pretend to grocery shop and I'm gonna set up like a uh, GPS boundary. So as soon as Gordon takes the bike, I'm gonna know that he has and I'm gonna see if there's enough time that while I'm in the grocery store, I'll get the notification, be able to come out before he could take the bike. So this is my common use case. Andrew is gonna go inside and I'm going to steal this bike within the next 10 minutes. We've agreed to, within you know 10 minutes, I'm gonna steal the bike at random. He left the thief the keys, so bad idea, but I'm gonna steal this bike. What Gordon didn't know was that the Invoxia GPS tracker also offers movement tracking. If you put your bike on a kickstand and then take it off, you get notified. It's worked almost every time I've left my apartment. Well, I just stole the bike and I don't see Andrew chasing me, so I guess that was successful. Unfortunately, what I didn't know at the time was that in order for movement tracking to work, the bike needs to first be stationary for five minutes. If anyone on Invoxia is listening, I'd love to be able to set the tracker to be idle through the app. After the Trader Joe's testing failure, we got back to basics. To do this, we went to a neighborhood that's notorious for open air markets with stolen goods. So this next test, I'm gonna give Gordon the bike and I'm just gonna see if the GPS tracker can even do the basic thing of letting me find him outside, which kind of simulates one of these like outdoor market spots. All right, Gordon just um, left with the uh, GSD and the GPS tracker, and I'm just really hoping that this like very basic use case will work, because if it doesn't, then it's like, is it worth it at all? Luckily, this one was pretty straightforward. Gordon texted me and said he was ready to be found, and then I just pedaled over to where it said he was. You know, I, I didn't want to like try to be totally hidden. I'm like, at least here we can, we should have reception. I think the next use cases will like push it a little bit further. For our last use case, we made it as hard as we could. It's sort of city specific, but we wanted to know what happens if a thief stole your bike and then took it back to a tall apartment building. Are we able to see at least which building it's in? And then are we able to use the Bluetooth that it has to see if we can figure out what floor it's on? And even better, which room? Even better, which room? 
Okay, it's been about 30 minutes since we left Union Square. Gordon took the bike and the GPS tracker into a secret location, the apartment that he lives in. And now we'll check on the Inboxia app to see if the GPS signal shows up in the correct building. Isadora Duncan, check. Hey man, can you buzz me in? Thanks. Then we're gonna go inside and comb each floor of the building. We're hoping that the Bluetooth proximity radar can lead us to the bike. We're now to the fifth floor and I still haven't gotten any bites on the proximity. We just have one left until the bike's kind of a goner. So yeah, we're obviously getting a little bit of a bite here. It's saying that we're now 17 feet away. So let's go toward each of these doorways and see if it gets us closer to it. Let's try this one first. Over here, 22, so that says it's colder. Um, let's try this door over here. Right now the bike is about five feet behind this door. Hmm. Knowing that it's in the right building is like very valuable, but I don't think that Bluetooth has like a high enough granularity, if that's the right word, to be able to track it into, into the apartment if somebody was to take it. Hey man, you got my bike? Hey, what bike? What bike indeed. After the testing finished up, I continued to use a tracker for about the last month. And I really feel like now I kind of like understand the nuances of it, understand what it's good at, what it's not so good at, and then also if it's worth buying. So the short answer, do I think you should buy this? Probably. The way that this gets super good battery life is by sort of offering like intermittent GPS tracking. You can basically have it as frequent as every five minutes or as slow as every 30 minutes, but there's no way to get like a current live action GPS with this. Now, while this relies on GPS to get its location, it uses LTEM to actually send that location either back to your phone or back to their server so you can figure out where it's at. But depending on where you live, that network could either be excellent or not so great. In short, you might want to look at your local coverage via its network to see if this is something that's going to work for you. So knowing that this doesn't offer constant GPS and then it does rely on this sort of like new experimental network, do I still think that this is worth it to buy for e-bike owners? At least in the US, I think this might be the best option for people that want sort of like an affordable way to track their e-bike. If you're in Europe, it might be worth looking at the POW Unity Tracker. That tracker actually goes inside the motor of the bike. It also relies on the bike's electrical system, so you don't have to worry about charging it, but it's a little bit more expensive and it doesn't work in the US. So. Another thing to keep in mind, this is running off like a lithium ion battery. So if you keep your bike outside in a super cold climate, that battery life is gonna be less. If you're still here, a tiny preview to my next couple videos. I wanna see if I can actually recover a bike with this. So I bought the cheapest e-bike that I could find on Costco. And the plan is to put this inside that, maybe let it get stolen and then try and recover it. So, so please subscribe. All right, that's all I've got. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Okay, tiny announcement. I recorded more than seven hours of footage for this nine minute video. So obviously everything didn't make the cut. I'm gonna be talking about my frustrations with this guy, where I hide it, and my battery life notes in the comments below. Also, for those of you with eagle eyes, you may have noticed that in my very first location, I was missing the bike tracker on the pier. I tried to retest and re-record that, but I actually ran into the same issue where my GPS tracker would not work on the pier. So I guess if a fisherman does steal your bike, you're gonna have to wait until he comes back on land. Thank you so much to Charles, Courtney, Dusty, Nick, Glenn for looking at early drafts of this video. Disturb in peace with some peace of mind. Sleeping in jeans, I'ma need a night. OD on a cheap advice. OC on the cheapest flight. Lately I've been on the move trying to get to something.